Hello and welcome to this channel. In the last video about recording audio in Flutter, we used this package called Flutter Sound. In today's video, we are going to use another package, actually two packages, to record audio in Flutter and to playback the audio that we recorded. So we are going to use the record package and just audio package. So we create a new Flutter project. And here in pubspec.yaml file, we are going to add record and just audio to play and to record our audio. And we also need path provider to provide a path to a location to save our audio. Now let's move to main.dart. Inside this file, we need to first import our packages. Then this is a normal Flutter application, my app. Then inside this class, we need to create an object of audio player and we need to create an object of audio recorder. Then we set a bool to show if we are recording or not so that we can change the buttons at the end. So we have the bool is recording. We set it to false at the beginning. And then we have file path, which is going to be the path to where we save our files. Then we have current position and total duration for the playback. Inside our dispose, we are going to need to dispose of the audio player and the recorder that we created. Then we have a function called start recording. This is going to be a sync function. If you are not familiar, I have another video that explains the async and await and the differences and different types of it. In here, we first have to check the permission because to record the audio, we need to have a permission. After the permission is granted, we are going to specify the location to save the audio file. We are going to use get application document directory function. We save it to the directory variable. Then we can work on naming our file because at the end we are going to save a file, the audio file. We can set it as recording, then the time, the date, and the millisecond. Dot M4A. Then for the file path, we are going to have the directory that we created and then we are going to add the file name at the end. Next, we need to create a config to use the recorder object. In the config, we can specify the encoder, the sample rate and the bit rate. You can find more info on the pop.dev page for the package. Next, we are going to start the recording by using the recorder object that we created before dot start and then we pass the config and the path. Then we set a state is recording to true, which was a Boolean variable. Another function we have is stop recording. In the stop recording, we just use the stop function in the recorder object and we change the state of the boolean function to false. Another function that we need is play recording. In play recording, we check the file path. If it is not null, which means that we have something in the path, then we are going to use the audio player and we set the path to the path that we used for recording. Then we need to get the total duration and then we are going to use the play function to play the audio that we recorded. It is also possible to set the position for the playback. When we are playing back the audio, we can set the position and based on the position, we can play the audio from that specific position. Now we get to the build function. Inside the build function, Let's run the app and it's easier to explain the app from the visual UI of the app. So here first we have the app bar, which is just a simple uh, text that shows modern audio recorder. Then we have a column that shows the, all the elements in the app. In the center, we first have an icon that is the mic icon. We set the size and we set the color based on the is recording boolean value. 
If it is recording, it's going to be one color. If it is not recording, it's going to be another color. Then we have a size box and here we have a row. Inside the row, we are going to have two buttons, record and stop. So these buttons are going to be active and inactive based on the is recording variable, which is the Boolean variable. Based on these, we are going to change the active state of the button. Underneath these, we have the play button. And obviously, when we click on each button, we are going to call separate function that we created before so when you click on the record we are going to call the start recording when we click on stop we are going to call the stop and when we click on play we are going to call the play recording function other codes in each button relates to the visual elements like the color the the edge of the button and so on underneath these we have slider for the slider, we specify the value, which is the current position, the max, which is the total duration. And if we will remember, we get the total duration in the function above that we created. Then we have seek function. Based on seek, we can move the slider to a specific position and the audio player is going to play the audio. So let's try to record an audio. One, two, three. Hello, this is a test. So let's play it back. So we cannot hear an audio. So if you are using the emulator, you can go to setting, which is going to be these three dots. Then you need to go to microphone. And here you need to enable the virtual headset. Now let's try again, record, one, two, three, this is a test, we stop and we play. One, two, three, this is a test. I don't know if you heard, but my voice played back, so it's working. So obviously if you are using a physical device, you don't need to enable the audio in the setting. Also, for the first time you run the app, the Android is going to ask you the permission to record the audio or not. Now, let's see where these files are recorded inside the device. So inside Android Studio, we have this device file explorer. If you do not have this one, it's possible that the Android side of the Flutter application and project is not active. You need to go to File, Project Structure, and in here you go to project, you make sure that you specify the SDK and then you have Android modules. After this, you can see this tab, Device File Explorer. And if still you don't see this one, you need to go to View, Tool, Windows and you can find this one, Device File Explorer. So when we click on this, it's going to show all the folders and data inside the emulator. It's going to be the same for a physical device. You need to install the physical device, the driver, which is usually automatically installed, and then you need to accept some kind of permission that the phone is going to ask you. Here we go to data folder, again, the data folder, and then we are going to find the package name. If you are not sure what the package name is, this is the one that you created, you specified at the beginning of creating the Flutter project. In case you don't know it, you need to go to the Android section. You need to go to App, then Source, then Main. We have Android Manifest file. You open it. At the top, you see the package. So this is our package. We are going to look for this com.example.recordplayaudio. Your package name should be different because you specify it when you created your application. So this is the package name. Inside it, we have different folders inside app flutter, 
inside Flutter Assets, you can see different files with M4A extension. So these are the audios. And if you remember from our code, we specify the file name as recording, then the date and time, and then the millisecond. This is because when you record an audio and you want to record another audio after that, we don't want to overwrite the previous audio. So in this way, each time you record an audio, you get a different file. Later on, you can decide which one to delete, which one to keep. You can also have another section in your app to display and list all these files for the user. And then the user can have the option to keep them, to delete them. So this is the location that files are saved. Now let's build this APK file. We go to build, we go to flutter and build APK. So build is finished and it is in this folder inside the Flutter project. We need to go to build, app, outputs, Flutter APK, and we have app release APK. We also have app debug APK. If you check the size, the debug is 76 megabyte and release is 20 megabytes. So when you create APK in release stage, it's going to have smaller size than the debug. We can also analyze this one. So inside build menu, we have analyze APK. Inside analyze APK, we are going to give it the release.apk. Click on open. Now we can see it's going to analyze our APK in terms of the size. This says that 91% belongs to the lib folder. If we open the lib folder, we see different folders. So this x86-64, we have ARM-64 and another version of it. Each one is suitable for different architecture of Android devices. And you may have seen this if you downloaded APK files online outside the Google Play Store. So here, Android Studio builds an APK file that works on all different architectures of different devices. If we can separate these, we can reduce the size of APK significantly. Another option is to go to Build, Flutter, and instead of building APK, we can build the app bundle. And this is the recommended format by the Google Play Store. When you are going to upload your app in the developer account, it suggests you that you use this format. So if you want to learn more about this app size on the release version, because it's going to be a longer discussion for a different video, Please subscribe for more videos. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.